Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to welcome you to this very important meeting today, uh, Tuesday, June 6, 2017, to the City of Portsmouth City Council Chambers. Please stand for the invocation of the Pledge of Allegiance. Oh, Heavenly Father, we come today asking for your grace and mercy. We ask that you guide us in the direction that you think the great city of Portsmouth needs to go. We ask for your blessings, your ethics, and integrity. We ask you for these things in all name, in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Madam Secretary. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> Commissioners, we will now have roll call. Please indicate your presence electronically. Five members of the Planning Commission are present. Commissioners, oh, that's you. That's you, oh. sorry. Commissioners, before you are the minutes of the May 2nd, 2017 public hearing, if there aren't any changes, we're in need of a motion. Commissioner G. I move for acceptance of the minutes as presented. Is there a second? Vaughan. Commissioner Vaughn. I second that motion. Madam Secretary. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We have a motion and a second, and you'll be voting electronically. The minutes are approved by a vote of five to zero. Due to the 4th of July holiday, please note that our next scheduled work session is Tuesday, July the 17th, 2017 at 12.30 p.m., 6th floor conference room, followed by public hearing at 1.30 p.m., City Council Chamber. Items reviewed today will be presented to City Council for action at their July 11, 2017 or July 25th. 2017 public hearing or as otherwise noted. Planning Commission rules limit a speaker up to five minutes to speak. We also ask that everyone please silence your cell phones at this time if you have not already done so. Our first case for today, UP 17-03 Port Norfolk. Jeffrey Young, managing partner of Safe Harbor Behavioral Healthcare is requesting a use permit for a substance abuse treatment program at 2700 London Boulevard. The program will offer both residential and outpatient care. The property is presently zoned General Mixed Use, GMU, and was formerly occupied by an adult day support and residential care program that catered to mentally challenged individuals. The property is designated on the comprehensive plan future land use map as light industrial and is further described as tax map 158, parcel 93. Staff coordinator, Stacy Porter. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. The property is on general mixed use GMU. According to the zoning ordinance, a use permit is required for a drug and alcohol treatment facility. The property is located on the edge of the Port Norfolk neighborhood at the northwest corner of Broad Street and London Boulevard. The property is 1.76 acres in size and contains a one-story 13,475 square foot brick building constructed in 1984. The site contains 89 parking spaces, including three handicap spaces. The site's perimeter is heavily landscaped with shrubbery and mature trees along Broad Street and London Boulevard. On the north and west is a privacy fence. On the south and east is wrought iron fencing. Incidentally, this is the former location of a residential facility for mentally challenged persons. The use permit was granted in 2008. The property also housed vans for the medical transportation business run by the facility. All operations ceased in April of 2016. 
I'll not now provide an overview of the surrounding area. The property is surrounded to the north by a warehouse partially occupied by Virginia Scenic, a stage and set company. The property is zoned light industrial IL. To the east is an economy lodge motel and post office. Both properties are zoned general mixed use GMU. To the south is the London Oaks Apartments. The property is zoned high density urban residential URH. And to the west are single family residences. They are also zoned high density urban residential URH. The proposed substance abuse facility is Safe Harbor's first and only location. The facility will care for up to 25 residential and 40 outpatient clients and be staffed by up to 15 persons. Residential patients will be housed in an area devoted to structured supervised living with 24 hour a day, seven day a week care supervised by on-site clinical staff. Outpatient care will be offered in the evenings from 6 to 9 p.m. The primary source of clientele will be referrals from the care managers in the Medicaid system, but will also include persons with private insurance and those that have been referred by their physician or other licensed medical professionals. Criteria for program administration and details of the treatment program are included in your agenda packet. Staff finds that the applicant's request for a substance abuse treatment facility complies with the recommendations of the comprehensive plan, which encourages reinvestment in vacant properties, as well as is compatible with land uses found in the general mixed use or GMU zoning district, which includes professional offices, institutions, and a broad range of light and moderately intensive commercial uses in close proximity to residential land uses. With the conditions listed in the staff report, staff recommends the approval of the applicant's request, and that concludes the presentation. Uh, commissioners, are there any questions or discussion for? Commissioner Devon? Yes. Yes, how many patients can the facility uh, I'm talking not in not how many patients can it handle on a 24 7 basis that was not a land use issue um, the state of Virginia will properly license them for this tre treatment facility and they will determine capacity oh okay. so that would not be something we would determine okay mm -hmm. Commissioner G as stated the uh, prior facilities had the uh, usage the same usage. Similar. Similar. Sim yeah. Okay, so yeah. we were just looking for clarity on why it wouldn't pass with the location, or was it based on the person that was there? A, no, a use permit is required specifically for drug, treat drug and alcohol treatment centers, so they had to get the use permit specific to that use. It, the last use for it was to keep mentally challenged people, so a little different. Just a, it's similar, but a little different. Uh, thank you for the clarity. Sure. Madam Secretary. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We do, uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is a public hearing for item UP-17-03. I do have a few speakers. As I call your name, would you come forward and you will have up to five minutes to speak. Our first speaker is Jeffrey Young. Hello, my name is uh, Jeffrey Young, and I represent Safe Harbor Behavioral Health Care. I want to thank you for the opportunity to speak to you today. Um, I want to take just a brief moment to, to kind of talk a little bit about what it is that our intent is. And uh, it's really a response to the ARTS program, which is the Addiction Recovery Treatment Services program that the state of Virginia has put out. Um, ARTS has opened up the opportunity for substance abuse care that has otherwise not existed um, at the needed levels. Um, so we are very excited for the opportunity to come to Portsmouth. My partner Jody has been a lifelong resident of Portsmouth and uh, 
throughout the country, there's obviously a severe opioid epidemic. And we are very uh, passionate about treating substance abuse. Jody has been doing this for the early, since the early 90s. I've entered into this field over the last decade after my own recovery from opioid treatment. And our goal is to come into Portsmouth and partner with the community and try to get ahead of the opioid problem um, that we're struggling with here. One point of clarity that I think is particularly important as it uh, pertains to the outpatient part of our program is this is not similar to a methadone clinic. Our folks will be entering treatment uh, from the Medicaid system referred on by a case manager and uh, who will be appropriate for the level of care of outpatient. This means that they're gonna be sober. They're gonna have probably have had some uh, like inpatient level hospital detox. Um, they shouldn't be on any long-term methadone or, or other maintenance uh, medications. And what our goal will be will be to support their recovery moving forward. So unlike a methadone clinic that can uh, be risky to the community, um, these are folks that are gonna be further along in their sobriety walk. Um, I don't know if, if I have a whole lot more um, to say. I'm, I'm not a, a great public speaker. Is there, do I, do I take questions or is that just kind of it? The uh, commissioners, are there any questions for, for Mr. Young? Mm -hmm. Commissioner Young, mm -hmm. Yes, sir, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, sir, I'm not a healthcare professional, so I, I need some, some help here. Um, how would what you're doing differ from the previous use of this property, i.e., uh, people come in and go in, the number of folks stay in there overnight, um, just general um, impact on the community? How, how would this be different from what was there a year and a half ago or so? Well, I'm not. Uh, very versed on, on the, the operations of what they were doing there. I do understand that it was a mental health facility, um, and so you had disabled folks who, who lived there residentially. I don't know what their schedule was, if they were allowed to kind of come and go as they wanted. Here there would be a set group time. So if someone is in an outpatient uh, program, they're gonna come for a certain period of the day, a couple hours, receive group therapy, and then they're gonna go back home. They're not going to be housed in the area under, under like a structured sober living. They're working, they're in the community, they're just receiving supportive services to maintain sobriety. So that's the 40 uh, client outpatient component. In addition, we want to start off with a residential component, which is simply just someone who needs a little bit higher level of care. They've already been to the hospital, they've already gotten their detox, um, they're stable, but they're not quite ready to go back to work, they're not quite ready to be on their own. At that point, they're at the facility 24 hours a day. Um, they will leave. You know, we want them to, to start to integrate back into the community. We don't want them to be institutionalized. But they'll always be uh, with staff members. So if we're taking them out to an AA meeting, they're going to go with the staff members. If we're taking them out to the park to get some fresh air, they'll be with the staff members and be supervised appropriately. Does that address the question? Okay, great. Any additional questions for Mr. Young? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Our next speaker, Greg Jones. You have up to five minutes to speak. Good afternoon, members of the commission. Uh, this is my first time speaking before a group like this, so if I appear to be a little nervous, I am. Uh, I urge you to vote no on this issue, um, UP1703 or at the very least delay it. Uh, the presenter in your work session noted that the, uh, there was no response from the Civic League. I'm a member of Mount Hermon Civic League, and as of our meeting, no one was aware of this particular proposal, and therefore we were unable to get together members to respond one way or the other. Uh, also, in the future, it'd probably be a good idea if we get uh, the requesters to meet with the Civic League so we'll know what's going on in our community. Um, there are seven residents in the immediate community, I believe to the west of the proposed site, and of that seven, three of them indicated that they were opposed to it as well. I was unable to talk with the others because they still work, and of course, being a retiree, I have a little extra time that I can devote to it. 
In closing, again, I ask that you to delay this request so that we can get some additional information. I know that um, staff is uh, uh, in favor of it. But again, I think it's important that those individuals that live near this particular site, that they get their, give their input as well. Uh, if it's such a great idea, I suggest staff take it closer to their home. We have a number of areas that we work with. Uh, there's a, the uh, hotel directly across. There's a constant flow of individuals walking back and forth through the neighborhood. And we want to give our fair share with the city of Portsmouth helping out. But I think when we're doing an ample amount over, then we need to look at some other options for other areas in the city. I thank you very much. Commissioners, is there any questions for Mr. Jones? Thank you, sir. Our next speaker, Jody Pegram. Hi, I'm Jody Pegram. I'm, I'm visually impaired, so I, c I can't see enough except to just basically get around. So that's why I had some assistance. And if I'm not making eye contact, it's because I just can't. But, um, you know, my name is Jody Pegram. I'm, I'm from this area. Um, you know, my, I, I grew up in, with my grandmother part raising me. I grew up in part Chesapeake, and my grandmother lived in Elizabeth Manor. My mother and father both own businesses in this area, and, I, and I'm a recovering person. Um, I left in the 90s to go get help. Um, I'd gotten in trouble running the streets of Portsmouth, um, and I was fortunate enough that there was intervention, and I was in a position to where I was able to, to go up to Pennsylvania and receive treatment. And from that, I ended up in different parts of the country, and this becoming what, I, what I've done for, for a living. I've gone in and, and set up programs in areas from Florida to California to Arizona to Washington, D.C. To, to, to help the community. Um, you know, that's really the idea behind this. Um, we're trying to provide a service that does not exist right now. And, and, and there's a huge problem in this community if, you know, regardless if, if, if if, if we want a place for this, it's really not about that. We just need it. Like, we, we just need some help. There's a, there's a lot of people that are struggling with their addictions. There's a lot of people that are hurting. There's a lot of crime. There's a lot of things that are going on that are affecting this community in a negative way. And it's, and it's directly related to substance abuse issues. Obviously not all of them, but we're just trying to provide a need. You know, we're providing a service for a need that's out there. As far as the gentleman that spoke with Mount Herman, we have Robert Andrews, and he's not um, signed up to speak, but he's been our community liaison. He has reached out to Port Norfolk uh, Civic League. He's reached out to Mount Herman Civic League on a couple different occasions with no response. Um, as far as Port Norfolk Civic League goes, they were, and he could explain it better, but the way I understand it is they were putting together a list of questions through email and they were going to get back to us and we were going to respond, you know, the best way possible. I, I, I think the important part of this to understand is we're really trying to be part of the solution. I understand there's a hotel next door that a lot of problems are coming out. We're the antithesis of that. You know, we provide supervised uh, recovery services. You know, it is our job to keep these people safe. It is our job to keep them comfortable. We know if they're safe, they need to be there. We know if they're comfortable, they will want to be there. There's a tremendous need, and we have to do it somewhere. Like, there has to be these services available, and we have looked around. And as far as a location goes, although it may not be ideal for some, but for what we do, it's the best location we have found by far. If there are going to be services like this in the city of Portsmouth, I have not been able to find anywhere else that would be able to provide them in a way that's already built to suit, like 2700 London. So is, is there anything I can, any questions I could possibly answer for you guys? Or? Commissioners, are there any questions? Commissioner Thompson. I just would like to start out by saying thank you for uh, trying to bring this service to the city of Portsmouth. I truly agree that we need that here. And I was going to actually ask you how y'all went about choosing a site 
um, a location to put a facility like that, and then you touched on it right at the end. Um, I just wanted to thank you guys for trying to do this. Commissioners, any other questions for Mr. Pegram? Thank you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a public hearing on item UP-17-03. If there's anyone else here who did not get an opportunity to register and you would like to address this application, you may come forward at this time, state your name and your address for the record, and you will be given up to five minutes to speak. Good afternoon, uh, John Lifsey. I live at 229 Mount Vernon in Port Norfolk. Sorry, I didn't register. I didn't plan to speak. Um, this does sound like a great idea. Uh, I'm a member of the Port Norfolk Civic League, but I don't speak for the Civic League, by the way. Um, our biggest concern is the location. And there's probably not a better location in Portsmouth either. I mean, it, to me, it should be in a resident in a, uh, industrial area. Unfortunately, we don't have those. Uh, this is on the edge of our neighborhood and Mount Hermon. Uh, the biggest concern is right across the street is London Oaks. We all know its reputation. Right across the street is a hotel that rents by the hour. So we know its reputation. Uh, I think our biggest concern is security. Uh, the city has worked very hard to clean up Broad Street especially broad. We've had a big problem over the years with drugs, with prostitution. It's gotten better. We don't want to see it backsliding. So again, our biggest concern is the outpatient part. Six to nine at night, where do they go after they get off? Uh, so that's our biggest concern. And uh, I'm not sure that this is happening so fast that people have had a chance to talk about that. But uh, from our viewpoint, the biggest concern is the security. Thank you. Commissioner Youngblood. Uh, th thank you. Uh, Mr. Lizzie, it's good to see you again. Thanks, Peter. Uh, he and I used to serve on a commission together. I know that you've been very active in your, your Civic League, and, and I appreciate your concern. When it was the previous use for this property, um, did you have any problems then? It's, this is apples and oranges. That has... What they were doing then with, uh, with Lucas, trans, uh, the Lucas people, was totally different from a drug rehab. I mean, they were dealing with uh, inpatient only and with drug, with apparently with people with uh, mental problems. So to me, it's totally apples and oranges. Um, okay, I, I, saw, I sort of heard a different story, um, but maybe I missed something here. I, it sounded to me like this was going to be folks who had already gone through the, the worst part of, of recovery and just needed a helping hand now, um, and they wouldn't be coming and going in and out of the facility at night. Not, All I know is what I've read yeah. in the proposal, and it does it okay. is outpatient also, and they uh, go there from six to nine at night, okay. and then they leave at nine o'clock. Okay, um, I, I appreciate the the thought there. Then thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Madam Secretary. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Is there anyone else who did not get an opportunity to register that would like to address this application? You have up to five minutes to speak. Uh, my name is Kelly Chapel. I live at 601 Dorset Avenue here in Portsmouth. Um, I only came here today for another thing to speak about. I didn't know anything else was going on. Um, I absolutely would love to see this um, brought to fruition. Um, <laughs> Take your it's time. It's really though. needed. I don't know really much about it, but as soon as I heard someone trying to reach out to people with opioid addiction, I support it 1,000%. I lost my 16-year-old daughter to a heroin overdose not too long ago, and anyone that's willing to step up and work with these people that desperately need 
help. They have my support 100%. And I just think it's so very important. I know location and there are neighborhoods, but this problem is so much bigger than all of that. And this community really needs to try to understand the scope of the devastation that's brought by opioid addiction and the loss that can come from it. So anytime someone is willing to step up and, and help with that, I just think we all need to support that. Thank you. Commissioners, any questions? Thank you, ma'am. Madam Secretary. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Is there anyone else here who would like to address UP-17-03? Appearing to be none, Mr. Chairman, members of the Planning Commission. Commissioner Youngblood. Um, I've given some thought to this, um, and, I, and I need to point out that uh, I live in Old Town, and three blocks away from my house, there was a methadone clinic for, golly, I've been here 17 years. They just moved, so let's say 16 years. And I didn't even know it was there for the longest time until one of the pharmacists that worked there pointed it out to me. It was a, a totally benign use of the property. Um, when the city moved to the new um, public, was it the public health building um, on uh, High Street, they, they built another facility to handle this methadone clinic. And I remember there was an awful lot of fear from the neighbors about what this was going to do to them and to their, their way of life. And I, th I think the record will show that there has been no degradation of the quality of life for those folks uh, due to this methadone clinic. Um, it, it, was, it was totally benign in our neighborhood. I think it's totally benign in, in, in their neighborhood also. Um, and I would, I would hope that we would see a similar uh, situation, a similar result um, with this proposed use. And we certainly, certainly have a need for it, not only nationwide, but also in our city. Um, so I'm going to support it based on my own experience. I understand the, the thoughts of the, of the neighbors, um, and I'm not discounting that a bit. John, if, if things go pear-shaped on this, um, I hope we'll maintain the ability to, to uh, shut it down. But I, I honestly don't believe that's going to be the case. And I, I guess if nothing else, I wanted you to understand the way I'm going to vote. Thank you. Uh, appearing to be no more speakers, Mr. Chairman, members of the Planning Commission, this public hearing is now closed. I need a motion. Commissioners, the commissioners need a, in need of a motion for UP 17-03, as well as a second. Commissioner Thompson. I would like to make a motion that we accept item UP-17-03. Commissioner G. I second. With conditions. With, with conditions. I have a motion and a second, and you will be voting electronically. This item is approved five to zero with conditions. Our next item, UP-17-05 Cavalier Manor. CE Forehan, agent for T-Mobile Communications, is requesting a use permit to construct a 165-foot monopole telecommunications tower on the rear portion of 3637 Victory Boulevard. The tower would be located approximately 60 feet from Rapidan Street. The property is owned by NTW Properties, LLC, and it's designated on the comprehensive plan future land use map as commercial. This property is also referenced as tax map number 531, parcel 1.2. Staff coordinator, John Hartley. Mr. Chairman, members of the Planning Commission, uh, this is uh, 
something that we haven't talked about in a while, the last cell towers that were proposed in the city uh, that required use permits was back in 2012 when uh, Intellos proposed two new towers, uh, both of them actually off of Portsmouth Boulevard, um, one just west of Effingham and the other uh, just before Elmhurst Lane. Uh, be before I go into the actual uh, um, issues of this particular application, I just want to go over again with you the uh, requirements of the Telecommunications Act of 1996. Uh, we were fortunate, uh, those of us in the planning and zoning world, uh, to have uh, Congress preserve the local zoning authority on applications for telecommunication uh, towers subject to certain limitations. And those limitations, there are basically six of them. Uh, one is that any decision denying a telecommunications tower must be in writing. Uh, that any decisions denying a t telecommunications tower must be supported by substantial evidence, that the localities may not adopt regulations that prohibit or have the effect of prohibiting wireless service, uh, that localities may not adopt regulations that unreasonably discriminate against functionally equivalent providers, uh, that localities must not must act on applications within a reasonable period of time, and that uh, any actions are preempted and, and we are prohibited as a locality from regulating on the basis of environmental effects of radio frequency emissions. Essentially, that last one means that, that we, can't, we can't consider uh, either the environmental or human effects on, on radio frequencies and their emissions, uh, since that is really the realm of the Federal uh, Communication Commission. So with that, I'd like to uh, proceed. Uh, what is proposed is a 165-foot monopole, which is a, a self-standing structure. Uh, it is proposed on a lot that, that is essentially a through lot or uh, a double frontage lot that runs between Victory Boulevard and Rapidan. On, on the uh, screen is the, the current zoning of the surrounding area, and, and you'll see a, a large pink strip that goes through. And most of those lots, including the, the, the property in question today, uh, are through lots in that they have frontage both on Rapidan and on Victory Boulevard. To the south or the, or the west, uh, the area is zoned urban residential, and that is part of the Cavalier Manor uh, neighborhood. To the east is uh, what's generally referred to as Victory Village uh, property, and that is zoned mixed, uh, mixed use employment. Um, so there's this strip of commercial on the opposite side or on the south side, uh, west side of, of Victory Boulevard. This is an aerial photo, um, an aerial view of the, of the area. Uh, the property, again, that the application is for is highlighted in yellow with a red star indicating the location of the tower uh, as it's proposed. Uh, in this picture, you can see Interstate I-64, 264 uh, along the right side. Um, just beyond that is the Victory Crossing uh, commercial area. Uh, again, t uh, on the upper side of the slide, uh, you can see the residential community of Cavalier Manor. So what is proposed is essentially uh, directly adjacent to the Cavalier Manor residential community. This is a ground photo of the property, um, and it's uh, Dale's, Dale's uh, uh, automotive repair. Um, most of this site is occupied in the front. The tower would be in the rear. Uh, the lattice work tower that you see in this photo is on the adjacent property, uh, which is uh, Culligan uh, water softening business. Uh, according to my early discussions with the applicant, uh, they looked at this tower and determined that it, 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 it was uh, so antiquated a structure, uh, it, it probably would not uh, be able to support a, a, a cell, uh, the, the 
telecommunications equipment and wiring, et cetera. This is just a photo of Rapidan, just to give you an idea of the, of the street itself. Uh, on your right are single family, one story residences. On your left is the, uh, is the office building that was built by United House of Prayer. Um, and it's a two story office building, uh, fairly good screening uh, for uh, protecting the, na the neighbors. This building I think was built in 2006 if I'm not mistaken. Um, it was prior to the, to the 2010 zoning ordinance. Um, two other photos, the top photo is the back of this property and uh, it's a little hard to see from, from my distance, uh, but there is a, uh, a storage yard in the back that's been that's been enclosed with a uh, a wooden privacy fence. Essentially, the tower would be in front of that fence towards us. Uh, the picture on the bottom are are those residences that are, that are most directly impacted by the proposed uh, telecommunications tower. Uh, again, they're they're. Uh, one-story, single-family, ranch-style homes that are part of the, the Cavalier Manor community. This is the plan view uh, of what's proposed. Uh, and I mentioned that wooden fence. Uh, it's, it's, again, it's a little hard to see, but that's outlined in the green line. Uh, the tower itself, again, proposed to be 165 feet tall, is uh, cited by the, the red triangle. And on the very right is a, an elevation. Uh, and just to give you some sense of scale, down on the bottom, and I'm going to see if my pointer works, down on the bottom here is, is what is purported to be a six foot uh, chain link fence. Just to give you some sense of the scale, uh, the elevation also shows that T-Mobile is proposing to be on the very top, and, but would also provide uh, three additional locations for uh, future co-location of, of other telecommunication companies. In evaluating this proposal, there were a, a number of items in the comprehensive plan uh, that were key to our recommendation, our final rec uh, to the staff recommendation on this application. Um, one of the key objectives of the plan is to minimize conflicts between incompatible land uses. Um, and, and looking at the, the size and the scale of the, of the proposed tower, uh, it's the staff's opinion that that, that land use is incompatible with uh, single family detached residential development. Uh, this is supported by land use policy number one, uh, which uh, maintains viable land uses and includes a policy to prevent impacts and encroachments of incompatible land uses and ensure proper transitions. And when the plan references tri transitions, we're really talking about land uses that sit between two incompatible uses. So you would have, you might have commercial and then multifamily and then single family. Um, you might have heavy commercial office single family. Um, so you, you create kind of a buffer between the more intensive use and the, and, and the single family residences. Um, or buffering. In the sense of buffering, uh, you're usually talking about a, a buffer yard of, of thick vegetation uh, between the different uses. Um, policy three, reduce land use conflicts, which includes policies to introduce transitional uses between lower intensity and higher intensity uses. Um, given all of those statements that are in the comprehensive plan, and those really are reiterated in the housing and neighborhood character uh, chapter of the plan as well, uh, staff has determined that it, it is an incompatible land use. And I think the photos that I've presented and the comments in the staff report uh, support that. We did uh, look at uh, some alternative locations, and I will, I will say that this is by no means a comprehensive assessment. Um, it's really more uh, for purposes of example. Uh, the red star uh, indicates the site that's proposed before you today. 
The yellow stars are alternative sites that uh, are open, uh, whether they're available or not uh, for this use is something that uh, the telecommunications industry and T-Mobile would have to determine. I would add that one of those sites uh, that's identified is a, a water tower that uh, is owned by the city. It's essentially right at the intersection of, of uh, pretty much airline or the railroad and, and Victory Boulevard. Uh, so in this opinion of staff, there are a non number of other alternatives in the near vicinity. Uh, Nor, uh, north of the interstate, which do not present the kinds of conflicts and incompatibilities uh, the tower that's proposed uh, would create with uh, the Cavalier Manor neighborhood. Unlike uh, uh, some other cases that you might see from us, we, we are recommending denial and uh, we have listed the reasons. Uh, they're on the, on the screen here. Uh, the location is incompatible with existing detached single family development. Uh, there is no transition or buffering between the proposed tower and those residences. Uh, the proposed use is inconsistent with the policies and strategies contained within the comprehensive plan. Uh, that there are more suitable sites, particularly north of Interstate 264, uh, looking back, uh, keeping in mind the map that I just had up. Um, also, if you look at the, the uh, coverage mapping that was presented to us by the applicant, uh, those coverage maps showed both the existing uh, network uh, that T-Mobile is operating and the proposed network with the new tower, uh, based on staff's reading of, of those coverage maps, uh, they still, there still exists uh, T-Mobile service in the area proposed to be covered by this tower. Uh, the purpose of this tower, as stated by the applicant, is to expand and enhance the existing service. Uh, this is not a dead zone based on their coverage mapping. Uh, now, whether you can stream the latest uh, movie or video, uh, that may be a different question, um, but there is uh, T-Mobile uh, communication uh, in, in this area, again, based on their coverage mapping. Uh, so we are recommending denial at the staff level. I would also mention that uh, one of our practices is not to assume that you're going to necessarily agree with staff. And in, in that event, we've proposed a number of conditions that were you of a mind to recommend approval. Uh, you could attach those conditions. And in the staff's mind, those, would, the, those conditions would address at least some of the more significant impacts that we believe should you know, need to be addressed should this pro project be approved. With that, I'll uh, stop talking and uh, attempt to answer any questions that you may have. Commissioners, are there any questions for Mr. Hartley? Commissioner Youngblood. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, as I understand from our work session, the, the lattice tower that is on the adjoining property, that is to say the Culligan site, would not be a compatible if it were brought up today, and it's only there because it's a, it's a pre-existing structure. Is that correct, sir? That's correct. Thank you. If, if I can just take one step beyond that, one, one of the things that we hear regularly is that what is there should set the tone, the character, the uh, design standards of what is built today. And repeatedly, we're challenged uh, with the fact that uh, the city has declared to raise the standards for new development. So you can't always be swayed or, or you the, today's standards shouldn't necessarily be the ones that existed 10 and 20 years ago, that we are trying to raise those standards. Um, so in, the, in this case, while there's a tower there today, it is historic. Uh, the city has altered its policies and its plans to, to change that, so. 
Commissioner G. Uh, as a frame of reference in mentioning that, that other, the existing tower, um, how tall is that tower? We, uh, I actually checked with the assessor's office and they don't have the height of that tower listed on their, on their property card. Um, based on measuring with aerial photos, it appears to be somewhere between 80 and 100 feet. Um, approximately, yeah. And, and that's, the be that's the best estimate we, we can get. Uh, Commissioners, any additional questions for Mr. Hartley? Thank you, sir. Madam Secretary. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a public hearing on item UP-17-05. <clears throat> I do have several speakers. As I call your name, would you come forward and you have up to five minutes to speak. Our first speaker is Joe Wright. Members of the Planning Commission, good evening. Good evening. I'm glad that the uh, a member of the planning staff proposed denying this because as I put on the sheet today, we wasn't ready for it yet. And the reason why I said yet is because they didn't have the decency to come to our Civic League and explain to us what they were trying to do. We're not a community of no. We, we, most of the time when someone proposed uh, any kind of site or uh, building or uh, store or uh, anything else in our neighborhood, they tried to contact our Civic League. The reason why I'm here, I'm the treasurer of our Civic League. The president had to work today, so he's not here, and he sent me. He dispatched me to come explain to you all that we wasn't ready for this tower yet. We already have one tower out there on Greenwood Drive, and most of the time, when things like this happen, like I said before, they have the decency to come to our Civic League. We're not the community of no, but we have a strong feeling for our community. I've been out there 58 years and I've seen a number of things that slipped by us because we wasn't informed that it was going to happen. For instance, we had a car lot uh, in our neighborhood that sold everything except cars. We had a flea market out there one time that sold everything except fleas. So I'm glad the uh, staff denied, uh, voted to deny, uh, 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 urging you to deny this. And uh, I thank you for your time. Any questions for Mr. Wright, Commissioners? Thank you, sir. Our next speaker is C.E. Forehand. Afternoon, CE Forehand, uh, 219, Sir Oliver Road, Norfolk, uh, representing T-Mobile. Um, here to uh, speak in behalf of this uh, communications application. I do have a, a letter from our chief RF engineer, if it's okay to pass that forward. I submitted it to staff, um, but it, it explains capacity coverage. Um, uh, Did you want to bring it up? One gives you a little bit of an explanation about capacity coverage from our chief RF engineer for Virginia. Um, I have been for, for several years, for multiple years, been building capacity sites for T-Mobile in Portsmouth. Um, I located some antennas on the hospital. I located um, antennas on, on several buildings and apartment buildings. I'm working with the city right now to attach some antennas on an existing water tank. Um, capacity coverage is for high density areas, for areas where our customers are demanding better coverage. So what's happening here is that T-Mobile would not build a site in this location if their customers were not calling and complaining and demanding better coverage in the area. 
that's T-Mobile and also T-Mobile's, um, which has also acquired Metro PCS. So T-Mobile and Metro PCS are one and the same, and we have a lot of customers that are citizens of Portsmouth in this area, and they might not be here today because a lot of times um, the silent majority doesn't show up to these types of meetings. They do call us and they do complain about us. This is one of my high impact, high visibility sites for the state of Virginia. So I've got a lot of pressure to try to put something out there. And one of the reasons why is because people are using data in their homes. And if they can't download something or they can't watch a movie um, in their homes, then they're calling and they're complaining. And you've got a community college right there. And guess what all those students are doing you know, while they're in their classes? Every single one of them are on their cell phones and they're using data. So we need to put a lot of antennas out here. We need to put at least 12 um, and accompanying equipment, um, uh, 60 to 132 pound antennas um, somewhere in this vicinity. And the farther we get away from this impact area, this is our optimal site and this is our optimal height. It's not saying we couldn't go a little bit lower, um, but the farther we get away from that community college and these, communi these, these citizens that are living in these houses, um, the, the, the more interference we're creating at another site. So we've got sites surrounding this whole area, but this is high impact. We're losing, you know, we're losing, we're losing signals. Um, people can't, um, they can't communicate, but they can't, they can't download their data in this location. Um, so that being said, I've been working on this specific site for, for over a year. Um, and um, the, the, uh, um, uh, the, the theory, I guess, was that, you know, we, we, we don't think we can accomplish what um, we need to do with the existing tower out there. So there's already a tower. This is a commercial zone. It's a light industrial use. It should be compatible with something like this. There's already a tower out there. So, you know, we can build one next door, and this tower is available to any other carrier because I can guarantee you wherever T-Mobile is going to go, um, if, they, if they're having trouble in an area, the other carriers are going to be having trouble, trouble too. So the ordinance, your ordinance uh, requires that towers be available for other carriers to co-locate on. You have 30 and seconds, sir. This is, you know, so, so this tower will be available for not only just T-Mobile, but any other carrier that wants to put antennas out there. And the other, the other carriers, um, they're, they're going to want to put a lot of antennas just like T-Mobile is because that coverage is being drained. And there are, I guarantee you, there are customers, citizens of Portsmouth right now calling us demanding better coverage in this area. And they may not be right here right now, but they're there. So I'm, I'm available and I'll be available for any questions from the, commu from the commissioners, the community, the citizens, anybody that's here today. Commissioner Vaughn. Yes, uh, you say that this particular site is your ultimate site? Yes, sir. For it's the a, kinds a, of transmission, uh, data transmission? Yes, sir. What it, it is the ultimate, but have you seen the alternative sites being recommended? The, the, uh, the further we get away from this impact area, this you know, community college, um, the, and, and, and like I say, you can look at our coverage maps and you can see that we have sites surrounding this location, right? So if we go over to the water tank, we're going to create some interference over there and then we're not going to be covering this area over here closer to the community college and all these residents behind us because these are all our customers. So we're going to create interference in one location and then you know, not be ultimate, not be the, the ultimate uh, um, location for the coverage in this specific, lo you know, locality. Is there anything you can do to the site to make it more attractive? Um, like I say, it's not, it's, it's not, I mean, we, we could obviously, um, we could actually lower the site a little bit, but again, your ordinance does um, require co-location. So, you know, we think that um, there's going to be other other carriers interested in location, locating antennas here so, in this. So when you say co-locations, <clears throat> you're talking about the other major AT and T, Verizon. Verizon. Yes, sir. So they're Sprint. having the same problem. 
wh whenever we're whenever we're having a problem, there, you know, we can see you can see that there there are not um, there's not a place for those carriers to locate anything in that vicinity either, and it's it's high it's it's high demand. Um, so whenever we're having a problem, it, it's it's uh, once once somebody's having a problem in an area, you can you can almost guess that. You know, another carrier. And I don't work for those carriers right now. I actually have worked for all the carriers in the past, but you know, right now for the last several years, I've been working just for T-Mobile, so I can't speak for them. Um, but I know when, whenever, um, whenever we build a new site, a lot of times the other ones will be right on our heels. So, Commissioner, is any other questions for Mr. Forehand? Yes. Oh, you still talking? Is this a private or public location? Well, the it's a, property it's a private, private property. property, yes, sir. I mean, I, I can't say it's not a, a I mean, it's op it's available to anybody. The tower would be available to. Uh, I'm Coalitive. speaking more about the ownership of the property. It's a, a business or it's owned by private business. business, yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Commissioner G. Uh, th thank you for joining us today. One of the main questions, I mean, I, I'm actually a 14-year veteran of the telecommunications industry. Yes, sir. So I dealt with a lot of PR yes, on sir. your end of these yes, things. Um, one of the questions, and I definitely can respect the fact that TCC is a hot spot. Yes, sir. Um, has, has that location been looked at? I'm not sure if there's rules that go into place with, with state, state buildings like that yeah, and ha habitating there. Because, I mean, ultimately, they're the ones who would benefit the most along yes, with, I mean, the community is honestly secondary when compared to the usage that's going to come from the school in that area. Well, I I'll just state that T-Mobile is, um, you know, they are, uh, they are very competitive in their pricing. And in order to in order to be competitive, you know, we're, we we um, we are trying to find the path of least resistance in in, in, in order to develop sites. Um, I have worked with the state. I've worked with VDOT. Um, I worked on all these towers you see on the inter industry. I've been in this industry for you know over 20 years, and I worked on all these VDOT sites. The state is not the, the easiest or the the, the cheapest entity to deal with um, so not saying that we haven't looked at we did look at that um, but really we we want to try to get the coverage out there as, as as quickly to our customers and so that we can pass on the the savings and, and it's as cost efficient as possible so we can pass on those savings to our customers um, because we are um, we are conscious of of cost, and we want to we want to provide our customers with an economical deal. That is that is is um, you know we, I mean our pricing is better than the the big guys. It, it really is, and so you know we want to offer economy, and and therefore we we look for we look for that economy in our expenses also. And you asked him, or you brought up a magic point that led me to my next question. Um, Quickly, yes, uh, what is your what's your anticipated timeline for start as well as uh, timeline for start to completion? If if this was approved, no matter what the site is, the ultimate goal is we really need. I mean, as soon as possible, because you know this this one is actually this is you know I've been working on this for a while. Um, ultimately, we really need this site up in the air before the end of the year, um, sooner if possible. Um, so the, the sooner the better. I guess that's where my worry comes in at, is that with the, um, with the community being able, unable to speak with you all on this, um, I, I, especially since you're saying you've been working on it for a while, I thought that the opportunity would have happened by right. now. Well, I, I'll be glad to meet with, the, um, you know, and that, that I, I have probably 80 sites I'm working on, but now that I know, I, I'll be glad to go in and meet with the community before city council. That, that's absolutely... Um, you know, a priority. Uh, I, I, I really didn't have the staff report until um, just recently, so I really didn't even know that there was, there was um, even a recommendation of denial. Um, I, have a, I have a, you know, a lot of sites I'm working on, but I'd be glad, very, very glad to take the time to meet with the Civic League. And I apologize for not doing so um, in advance. Commissioners, are there any other questions for Mr. Foy? Thank you, sir. Thank you all. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Our next speaker is Andrew Whalen. He 
please state your name and your address and you'll have five minutes to speak. I'm Andrew Whalen. I represent the owners of uh, 3645 Victory Boulevard. Uh, we're the adjacent property, Culligan Water, our BNS Water Treatment is our corporate name. Um, and that's, that's basically what I, I came here to tell you is we're next door. Um, we're not opposed to the tower and uh, we're you know, open to negotiation for our tower because um, you know, I, I don't think it's been evaluated whether it's uh, structurally sound or not. I think those are uh, just opinions from probably 100 yards away. Commissioners, any questions for Mr. Whalen? Thank you, sir. Thanks. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a public hearing on item UP-17-05. If there's anyone here who did not get an opportunity to register and would like to address this application, you may come forward at this time, state your name and your address for the record, and you will be given up to five minutes to speak. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair, Honorable Commissioners, and fellow interested parties. I am Mark Geduldig Yatrovsky, P.O. Box 50141, Portsmouth, Virginia. We have an interesting uh, conflict of, or com competition that's in process here. On the one hand, the rights of the homeowners who would be affected by this sort of visual change to the landscape. On the other hand, we have people who are users of telecommunication services. And what your charge is, is to take into account the land use aspects of this particular issue. Now, as a T-Mobile subscriber myself, I have to say I'm appreciative of the company's commitment to keeping costs low. I am a well-known cheapskate, and I like to pay no more for, for service than I have to. <laughs> On the other hand, I'm also a homeowner, and I know that if a tower were to be proposed for neighboring property, I would view that with some skepticism in terms of the aesthetics of the installation. There is another concern, there's another issue that's a little more distant here, but it is definitely coming. I have attended a number of discussions about 5G wireless including one that was uh, a city council briefing. And there is some enabling legislation that the General Assembly has adopted, which allows the providers a great deal of latitude in terms of where they will site their infrastructure. The the really sticky part of this is the towers will be much closer together and much more prevalent than in the existing 4G environment. So what does that mean? Well, potentially, you could be permitting a tower in a location that is not optimal that is in conflict with our existing zoning code and coming along behind it will be new technology which will make the 4G technology obsolete or it will make the 4G technology less desirable. So you have an undesirable use in a residential area, abutting a residential area, that's part of the skyline. And 
it's going to be supplanted in the not too distant future. I would urge you to accept the recommendation of planning staff, deny the application, and let planning work with the applicant on alternate siting that is compatible with the zoning ordinance. Thank you very much. Any additional questions for Mr. Trukowski? Thank you, sir. Madam Secretary. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a public hearing. If there is anyone else here who would like to address this application, you may come forward at this time, state your name and address, and you will be given up to five minutes to speak. Hello again, I'm Kelly Chapel. I live at 601 Dorset Avenue. I do have a favor. I don't really know how to use this. Can you put the map back up that shows the neighborhood, please? Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, you can do that one. Yeah, that's fine. Yes, sir. Does it work? Well, the little red arrow on the top. There. Okay. Uh, uh, no? Okay. So I'm just going to point real quick. And I'm still opposed. <laughs> um, it's not an attractive track of land there that we face already. Um, and unfortunately, I have had to make some complaints to the city in regards to that. Um, I just don't think that this is the ideal place to put this tower um, for not only the residents, um, but for construction purposes, um, property values. Uh, my husband is a firefighter, and he has very strange hours, and he sleeps at very strange hours. And um, I don't know how long it takes to build a tower, but I know that that would interrupt his lifestyle, and I'm definitely opposed to that. But um, beautification and property values, and, and if that is the right place for a giant tower, um, I just don't think it's the best use of that land. And I know he said he could lower the tower, but I believe that just brings those radio waves closer to us if you lower the tower. Uh, I just don't think it's the best use of that land. Thank you. Any questions, Commissioner? Thank you, ma'am. Madam Secretary. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. It, it, is there anyone else who would like to address this application? Commissioner Thompson. Commissioner Thompson. I just have to ask again, if you moved, it's how far across the interstate is it? It's a mile. If you went to one of those alternate locations, is it that far? Come back All right. John, do you know? Okay. Um, I, I know that some of us were talking about how, how big of a difference in coverage that would make if it were cited across 264. <clears throat> Would it make that much difference? Yeah, he, yeah. I, again, we're, we're, you know, we're trying to, the farther away the, 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 the more interference is going to cause with other sites. Um, so basically, um, you know, we're citing this. There's, a, there's already a tower there, so we're trying to fit in with, you know, that. that's the ex example of the built environment. So, um, you know, there aren't any other towers in those other locations. The water tank's too far away for sure. Um, I've already looked at that. It's too close to one of our existing sites. It's gonna cause interference. I'm, I'm, I am dealing with the city on a different water tank, on another water tank. I am putting, I am currently right now I'll be before city council, I think, in July or August um, with a, you know, on a lease with the city on another water tank. So I am, I am trying to use whatever uh, is existing out there. So um, ideally, we're going to be as close to this 
I mean, that neighborhood is our target and the community college on the other side. Um, so the farther, realistically, y'all are gonna have to deal with covering neighborhoods because we need to cover neighborhoods. We don't necessarily need to cover industrial areas all the time. We need to, the community to figure out a, a plan to cover neighborhoods because that's, that's where the demand is. Um, in capacity especially. Sir, I appreciate, you. Thinking about I appreciate your comments. Yes, Thank you, sir. Commissioner Vaughn. I have one more, one more question of T-Mobile. We're talking capacity here, and where you want to locate it is where the sty is, but directly across that to the side of 264 is another location. Would that capacity be so much different from where you're proposing? Well, I have no idea if I can obtain a lease on that piece of property or not. Like I, like I said, the staff, you know, we just, today was the first time I saw staff suggestions of alternative locations. I haven't seen those before. Um, you know, we, we, I have no idea if I can obtain a lease in that location. Um, I guess my next question then would be to Jonathan. Excuse me? Are those properties available? They're alternative sites, but are they available? Uh, I know that I know that a couple of them are. I don't know that all of them are. I identified areas that were uh, or parcels that were essentially vacant. Um, I know that we have a number of facilities on existing water towers. Uh, I also know that the two directly along the interstate. I'll, I'll say just for uh, below. Victory Boulevard, as you're looking at this photo, uh, that are back behind uh, Victory Crossing are areas that are both available. Uh, the three on the north one, I think, is on the regional jail property. Uh, the other two directly along the interstate are areas that are vacant. So again, this is not a comprehensive, I mean, we, d we didn't look for we didn't go out and talk to owners and try to find another site for this facility. We just identified areas where if T-Mobile went out and talked with the owners, it would be a more suitable location from, land, from a land use perspective than where the current tower is proposed. Thank you. Okay. Commissioners, are there any additional questions? Madam Secretary. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Appearing to be no more speakers. Mr. Chairman, members of the Planning Commission, this public hearing is now closed. Commission, is the chair is in need of a motion and a second? Commissioner Youngblood. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to make a motion that we deny UP-17-05. Commissioners, is there a second? Commissioner I'll Devon. second that. We have a motion and a second that UP-17-05 be denied. Madam Secretary. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just for point of clarity, the motion is to deny. A yes vote is to deny it, and a no vote is approving it. So vote yes to deny, no approve. This vote is denied by a vote of five to zero. Madam Secretary, I believe that concludes our agenda for the day. Is that correct? That is correct. Commissioners, do you have any further business? Mr. Baldwin, is there um, any further business? Uh, yes, I have one minor thing. I'd like to just uh, make a correction. In the beginning of the meeting, it was noted your Next work ses session is on the 17th, and as we discussed in the work session, it's actually on no. July the 18th. the 18th. It's Tuesday, July the 18th. Just want to correct that for the record. Thank you, sir. 
commissioners, any additional comments? There being none, this meeting is now adjourned.